We did not have a 30 under 30 list when you were under 30. These guys all have an advantage that you didn't have, which is they have each other to kind of lean on. Who helped you? You know, because when you were doing this, it was very unusual for somebody your age to be playing for, for those big stakes. Kind of, so who, where did you get kind of your, your, your North Star? So I'll tell you something. My, my, my mentor was my father. My father uh, took me to China while I was 12 years old. And I promise to you, China then is very different than China today. At that time, you would not be able to differentiate between a guy and a girl because they all wear, wore the combats. They all had the same haircuts. The women did not have any you know, lipstick or any makeup on. You could not differentiate. And so I actually started getting trained by my father from a very, very young age, and that really helped me. And then I got the proper formal education, but every Christmas, every summer, I would go back and work with him. And that gave me a big advantage. Now, you were, a, uh, you were an MP. Uh, while you were doing all this, uh, we have some great politicians here, and we have some great entrepreneurs. But why, why, why are you mixing the two, or why were you mixing the two? Sure. <laughs> very, very but the two hard jobs uh, that you, you put together there. It's a very good point. So I was born in central Tanzania in a place called Singida. My grandfather was born there. I actually never made it to the hospital. I was born at home with a midwife, and I almost died because uh, they miscalculated. The umbilical cord was around me. And to cut the story short, I'm alive today. But, <laughs> but when I went back, when I graduated from university, I'm a Muslim, so we go back and pray uh, for, for the people that have passed away, like my grandfather. And when I went there, it's a small town, it's a peri-urban constituency. So you drive five miles out and you see rural areas. So this is a, a story I want to share with you. I met an old man, and there was a puddle of yellow water. And this man was kneeling down, and he had a plate, and he had a bucket, and he was scooping that water into the bucket. So I asked him, first I greeted him, and I asked him, sir, what are you doing? And he says, this is the water that you know, we drink. And I said, no, and he, he felt that I didn't believe him. So he said, come home. And I went home, and I saw used PET bottles, yellow water, people were drinking. And I said, but who's your member of parliament? Now, in Tanzania, you have to be an MP to become a minister. Actually, the minister of water was the member of parliament of that constituency. And when I started researching, I realized there was a lot of waterborne diseases, people were dying, there was no proper education, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I went into politics. I promise to you, I stayed in politics for 15 years and uh, uh, retired from politics. But the principal reason was to go and do impact and help. So I, I didn't have to wait for our government funding. I was spending my own money. Accessibility of water went to 92%. We had two secondary schools. We ended up with 22 secondary schools in the 10 years that I was there. We fought malaria. We fought, you know, people did not believe at that time HIV. People thought once you get HIV, you're going to die. And I was trying to explain to them, look, you can get on medication and you can live a normal life. And you have to take care of yourself. So that is the reason why I became an MP. Uh, I, I, I get it, actually. You know, your you're, you're excellency, you're lucky he's not Botswana and you have a presidential candidate here. You know, very, uh, you're, you're, you're very good. You're very good. Uh, I reread the uh, Forbes cover story we did about you, and one thing that struck me was kind of your work day. You work really hard. <laughs> what, can, can you walk everyone through like a typical you know, Moduji work day? You know, I'll tell you one secret. Huh? You can have all the acumen, you can be as intelligent as it comes, but if you're not going to put that hard work and struggle, you will never make it. There is no magic to it. I, I, I start my day at uh, 5 a.m. That is when I was kidnapped at the gym. <laughs> but 5 a.m. in the morning, I go and do my 10K run. And then uh, by 6.30, I'm in the office. I have thousands of emails that I need to clear. And because I have 112 divisions in the, in the company, and I have three board meetings, where we go through the financials, the balance sheet, the P&L, et cetera, et cetera. And then later in the afternoon is when I meet people internally. And then in the evenings, I meet people that want to come and see me. So I used to put averagely 100-hour weeks. And sometimes you get so tired, you fall asleep. I have a 
bed in my office, I'd fall asleep and change uh, the tie the next day, but the suit is the same and maybe a shirt, <laughs> you know, and you continue. So, so my advice to all you young people is that there is no magic in success. We have to really, really hustle and work hard. You, you, you mentioned the kidnapping, and I saw a bunch of people go, what's with that? So maybe you want to tell that in 30 seconds. Yeah, uh, so it was 5, in, uh, 5 a.m. in the morning. I went to the gym. It's the only time I, I drove. Tanzania is a very safe country, no security issues. And some random guys took me for nine days. Uh, I was blindfolded for nine days. My feet were, I was stripped naked. My feet were tied. My hands were tied. And you know what, uh, why I love my country the most is... You know, usually when a rich guy gets kidnapped or something happens to him, people don't care. But I'm indebted to East Africa, to Africa, because the poor of the poor were praying for me. And, uh, and I think I'm here today is because of the poor praying for me, and with God's help, I'm alive today. They left me without a ransom, eh? very close to the state house, uh, at uh, 2 in the morning after 9 days, and that's when I got to see... Uh, so it was very, very terrible. But I'm, 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 I'm happy. Uh, I've got a new life, uh, and I, I it, think I could be a better person. How did, how did that change your perspective on life? It had to. I, so the money, the money is not important anymore. It's, it's all about what I can give back. 